Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and what you're looking at is the first ever geological map of the moon. And it's actually really important. So let's talk a little bit more about why it's important and what exactly this is showing us, and welcome to What The Math. So it looks like we might be going to the moon after all. As a matter of fact, uh, we haven't really been back here for quite a while. NASA, as you probably know, has announced their plans to return to the moon with the so-called Artemis mission, and even very recently, the Trump administration announced that they're planning to encourage the mining of the moon, sort of making it official and authorizing the commercial mining of this beautiful object. But around the same time, the so-called USGS, which stands for United States Geologic Survey, released the first ever comprehensive geological map of our beautiful neighbor, of our satellite. So this right here is it, and you can actually find the more detailed picture in the link in the description. But what exactly is this showing us, and how is it different from any of the other maps we've previously had? Well, unlike previous maps or unlike previous surveys, the USGS version is actually a culmination of 60 years of analysis and thorough investigation of the entire surface of the moon. And it's essentially a combination of several different studies all in one. This map right here shows us various types of rocks and various types of geological structures on the moon, as well as their ages and defining features and possible origins. And remember, since the moon doesn't actually have any geological activity, like for example, there are no volcanoes here anymore, there are obviously no plate tectonics or really anything else that can actually change the surface, the surface of the moon will most likely maintain all of these features for a very long time, possibly even several billion years. So essentially this is really a kind of a screenshot in a sense of the entire surface that is going to look like this for an extremely long time. Although when I say that there's no geological activity, it's not actually entirely true, because we still get the various meteorite and asteroid strikes once in a while. Which becomes even more obvious as you start looking around the surface and discovering all sorts of craters of different sizes. But other than cratering, there's really nothing else geological going on here, at least in the last billion or so years. We do however know that these dark patches on the moon that are essentially facing us were actually formed by the last geological activity, the one that created all of these beautiful maria, or mare as they're also known, or these really dark, well technically oceans of the moon. And they're called oceans or mare simply because we believe that this was actually water before. Today we obviously know that this is not so, we know that this is actually the extremely large leftovers from a volcanic eruption. The eruption that most likely ended around 1 billion years ago, creating this extremely beautiful and extremely bright formation, something similar to what you see right here. And this was all formed by the eruption from within the moon. Now today we believe that all of this happened because, just like our planet Earth, at some point the moon had a lot of different isotopes on the inside, and some of them were actually producing a lot of heat, essentially melting the inside of the planet, and even creating a lot of heat to the outside as well. Today various isotopes is the reason why our planet Earth is still actually hot and will probably maintain the heat for a very long time as well. And at some point, some of these isotopes for some reason ended up on the near side of the moon, which then created all of these various volcanoes and these really really large oceans of lava that were probably visible for at least a few hundred million years and some scientists speculate that possibly even several billion years. So this was probably an extremely beautiful formation that possibly even looked a little bit like a tiny sun in the night skies. So a lot of early life, if it could actually see the moon, it most likely saw something that was really really beautiful. Not only did the moon reflect the sunlight, it also produced its own light from all of these volcanic eruptions. But anyway, we're getting a little bit sidetracked here. So essentially this was the only other geological activity on the moon, except for of course the asteroids and meteorites that landed here. And so creating this geological map allows us to understand the moon in a lot more detail. And although the main purpose of this map is technically scientific, it's very likely going to be used for commercial purposes as well, which can be seen as both the positive and the negative. So on the one hand, if we decide to commercialize the moon and try to create mining enterprises here, 
We don't really know what this is going to lead to, possibly another gold rush. But at the same time, when you really think about it historically, this is exactly how our society advanced and how it basically was able to essentially overcome some of the biggest historical hurdles. For example, the colonization of the United States and the spread of colonists in the United States was mostly guided by the idea of mining and looking for gold everywhere. And so the gold rush in the United States led to essentially the development of the entire country. So in some sense, if something similar is created here on the moon, we might see an explosion of different space missions and essentially reach the next stage of human evolution, becoming an actual space species. But what could we possibly even mine here? Well, this is where this geological map comes in really handy. And this is actually why I wanted to talk about these Mare as well. During the Apollo mission, the Americans were able to sample six different areas and collect roughly around 300 or so kilograms of moon rock, which when combined with the samples from the Soviet lunar mission, allowed us to realize what sort of composition the surface of the moon had, and most importantly, what sort of elements were available to us right here on the surface and could possibly be exploited later on. And when combining all of this data from Apollo missions and from the Soviet missions with the data available from other missions, USGS was able to create this beautiful map, dividing the entire surface of the moon into 43 specific units, which can then be sort of subdivided into other categories. And although not everything in this map is new to us, like for example, we already knew that the darker patches on the moon are actually much younger than the bright patches, which are much, much older, actually several billion years older. There are actually a detailed representation of each of these parts, including some areas that we didn't really know about before or were not aware of in terms of the kind of rocks available on the surface, the age of the actual rock, or more importantly, what could potentially be mined there. For example, we now know that there are these unusual gravitational anomalies around some of these mare, and they suggest that there is something really dense on the inside, very likely something metallic or something potentially precious to um, us here on Earth, and something that can definitely be mined. We also discovered really high concentrations of thorium, as well as some of the other so-called rare earth metals. Now, rare earth metals is a very general term that sort of combines different elements, but in a nutshell, these are actually some of the rarest and most expensive elements on the planet, and unfortunately for the US, as of today, most of it is actually produced by China. A huge amount of rare metals come from China, and only a very small part comes from the US and from other countries. And because rare earth metals today are used in pretty much all of the industries that we have, it would actually come to me as no surprise if eventually this is exactly what the US decides to mine here, mostly because what we've discovered is that this part of the moon right here, the one facing us, is basically covered in something known as creep. K stands for potassium, RE stands for rare earth metals, and P stands for phosphorus. All of these elements are exceptionally important for industries today, and finding a way for humans to somehow mine them on the moon and possibly even make things on the moon on site would actually completely transform how we produce things here on the planet. And honestly, I wouldn't really be surprised if this is kind of what the Trump administration had in mind when they announced the plans for essentially mining the moon. And this part here also has a lot of other interesting materials, including some really interesting rare metals that we don't really have as much of here on, on the planet Earth. These parts, for example, have quite a lot of titanium, uh, a lot of magnesium, a lot of calcium, and titanium alone is a good enough reason for us to go and to try to harvest it here on the moon, simply because it's relatively rare on Earth. Not to mention that other parts of the moon, the ones that received different collisions from various asteroids, also haven't really been touched by any geological activity, meaning that whatever came with meteorites and asteroids is still probably there on the surface, which would also make it relatively easy to harvest. Not to mention that there are also a lot of different radioactive materials, including uranium, thorium, and potassium. O3 are kind of important for various industries on the planet, and would even allow us to create a lot of other on-site reactors and factories on the moon itself. In other words, there are definitely a lot of reasons for us to try to go and make some kind of a mining colony on the moon, even though possibly not everyone would agree with it. Nevertheless, as history showed us before, 
The commercial enterprise and the idea of trying to make money has always really propelled humanity to new levels. And although colonization hasn't resulted in the best humanity has to offer, unfortunately, as it looks right now for the space program, it's really probably the only way for us to jump to the next level of space exploration. Because if we just focus on scientific studies of the moon, it's unfortunately unlikely to become anything substantial over the next few decades, as we've learned from the past few decades as well. The so-called space race between the US and the Soviet Union and the attempts to do a lot of science on the moon didn't really create anything that you see right here, the concept art from 1986. So it looks like the only chance for us to actually colonize the moon is really only the commercial enterprise. And although I don't truly fully agree with this policy, it might be really the only way for us to become a space species after all. And so this geological map will most likely serve us quite well. It might actually allow us to create something really useful on the moon and will potentially propel humanity to the next level. But until the first Artemis mission and until we actually get to use this map, unfortunately that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Once we learn more or once we understand a little bit more about what's going to be happening on the moon in the next few decades, I'm going to make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon, or you can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that I'm wearing right now as well. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.